Hey y'all, hope y'all uh, having a good start to the week. Uh, southern folks know what that is right there. That's a good looking purple hole pea. I'm uh, mighty proud of this pea patch this year. <clears throat> I uh, really didn't fertilize it. <clears throat> I didn't use one ounce of pesticide on it. Um, that's good Lord smiled on us with these marigolds and no aphids. Got the right amount of rain, got some more over the last couple of days that'll set them up pretty good. And old Hudson on watch out there, keeping the old deer away. Picked our first mess of them this morning. Uh, Aunt Bonnie's kind of in, uh, not failing health, but just uh, with uh, some breathing condition, can't get really overheated, but uh, she came up and supervised a little bit. And then we uh, sat on that porch and shelled a few yeah i guess we cheated a little bit with the pea shelter that wally gave us but uh i uh i know it didn't stop our conversation just the same as her and i sat there on that porch that has seen hundreds of bushels i asked her that she said well we'll stay with hundreds but uh we might be bumping thousands <laughs> that's a lot of peas but uh i got tickled at one thing she said back when i tilled up that first little little bitty patch with her hand plow last year I um, didn't have that many obviously she said baby you're going to, have to grow pretty long rows to get you know to get in production and I told her I was gonna put this whole pasture in it <clears throat> and she said how are you ever gonna pick them all well this afternoon on the porch she said I guess next year you could go ahead and put the whole pasture in them <laughs> Well, she said not the whole pasture, but most of it. <laughs> but anyway, just uh, having a good day here on the old place. My, uh, I'm learning some hard lessons. Uh, of course, these old tomatoes were probably the prettiest plants you could see as they began to make. And mom got down and had to focus priorities and don't regret it one second. But uh, out of all them plants, the uh, cut worms and and improper staking, not watching it good enough and not being here, kind of have made them go to the wayside. So i am uh, still got some, resetting some some tomatoes. Oh, they'll make right along, but not as many as I figured I'd have. But as Memo would used to say, more than I could eat, we'll have plenty. Uh, cucumbers and squash are about done with this run, but it's a good thing about East Texas, we get a couple of seasons down here if you get after it. So we'll be putting some more in for too long. That corn's showing out for sure. And uh, I uh, got a couple of spots we're gonna throw another round of corn and peas in to have closer to fall. And maybe I can uh, do a little better with the tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one. Yeah, that, that end rot's getting them. Of course, everybody's got a solution, but none of them seem to be working for me. <laughs> About one out of five or one out of four have a little rot on the end. But, uh, I'll pay a little bit closer attention to them through through this next growth and see if we can't save them. Something else I'm learning the hard way. <laughs> Talking with Aunt Bonnie and thinking of some some things and memories kind of brought it to mind. But I think the days of free range chickens on this old place are going to be suspended for a little while. Uh, lost another one this morning. I think it may be an old hawk. I didn't see any any uh, tracks aggravated me well i hadn't lost it but she ain't doing too hot <clears throat> she's gassed up pretty good walking around and uh happened while i was having coffee this morning that's what made me so mad can't see any tracks so i think we'll just keep them shut up <clears throat> for a while they've got plenty of room to roam in there just have to pump up the feed a little bit and uh, y'all see a neon sign saying free chicken let me know because there must be one out here them predators are coming left and right. I imagine several things that are getting them. So we'll lock them down and uh, see if we can't salvage the, the flock. I think I'm down to about 24 from close to 100. <laughs> so we got to do something, even if it's a, a little late and at the expense of a bunch of those birds. We'll go in in a minute and take a look. I've got about 15 about to hatch. One was getting after it a while ago. I don't know if he's going to have made it out by the time we get in there. Sure blessed to have that mower. Man, it's uh, 
turn it into kind of a little farm tractor with that little red wagon I've got. Hitch it up and use it to haul feed. Pick, pick peas. And, uh, I get tickled at myself because every step counts on this thing. So I, I mow with every, with every trip that I take back and forth to the front of the house. I mow another stripe and keep it, keep it down. Y'all do that? I just some of you do. No, I didn't do a roll call the other day, so we'll have to get that done. But talking about learning lessons the hard way. I guess I've been pretty good at learning them the hard way sometimes. They're a little slower than most. But, um, my cousin, my Aunt Bonnie's son, Scott, <clears throat> he was telling a story the other day. got me thinking about hard lessons learned. Uh, one, his best friend, uh, back when he was in high school, of course, youthful indiscretions and acting like knuckleheads. He uh, told me his friend came up and spent the night with him and they had a habit of prowling the town after everybody else was in bed. I don't even know if they had their driver's license, but uh, not really drinking or corrals or anything, just wanting to be out and about and get away with something. Said they lived right over there off of uh, Lily Street on a little hill. And uh, they'd slip out after everybody went to bed and, he said they had it down to a science. Friend was in for the weekend. <clears throat> Put that old car in neutral and back it down there real quiet like. Coast down the hill and start it. And just go goof off around town for an hour or two. And then take a run and start and kill the engine. And pull right back in that driveway and go to bed like nothing happened. He said it normally worked all right. But this particular evening, his friend was in town and for a visit. And uh, they went through the motions just like always. Thought they were scot free. Got down the road a piece, got done <coughs> running around, decided to head on back to the house. So here they come. Cars in neutral. Nice little entrance right back in, so quiet like. But this time the porch light was on. And there stood his mom, my Aunt Bonnie, this other old boy's mom and dad on the porch watching this approach <laughs> at this car with no headlights holding their two boys like knuckleheads coming in from goofing off he said he he knew the drill <clears throat> he was ready to take his punishment and he got out of the driver's side but his best friend they were right up against the stoop and just about knocked over so boy's mom and dad when he opened the door but he wasn't giving up he took off and ran right past them, porch light on and everything, and dove in the bushes like he wasn't a part of it. <laughs> Scott and I still laugh about that night, and I don't know what in the world I was thinking trying to hit them bushes. <laughs> Never give up, right? <laughs> but anyway, that was another hard lesson to learn. But uh, I guess I learned it just the same. Got to behave yourself. But uh, I know what it's like to fill in the dad's leather belt. I promise you that. <laughs> oh, good times. Guess we was all kids once, weren't we? I might have should have tried out for the Olympics with that, that diving in the bushes business. We'll go in here and check on this chicken. See if it's made out of the egg. I do want to share something. Get, uh, man, I'm so blessed to have all of y'all as friends and following along for this little old simple journey. Sometimes I wonder what it's all about myself, but I think it's just reminding us of where we come from and who we are and the simple good stuff and just doing right and being good folks. I picked up a lot of really close friends along the way through this little old page and uh, a couple of them out of Oregon. And she, uh, her and her sister just jewel some folks and uh, good Christian folks and she sends a few little old tokens along the way been a really big blessing I uh, got a canner the other day goodness so we're going to be putting up some things this evening but I've got another friend that I've been acquainted with for quite some time and uh, worked together with her and her son at some service projects y'all follow for any length of time remember Ben's Leghorns they're still doing good that's her son I named, named that batch of Leghorns after him since it was around his birthday when I got him and they hatched. But uh, Dear Soul lives up in New York. 
does a little gardening that makes me jealous even. And uh, just good folks with a heart for service and have uh, been friends for several, several years. Well, I shared with her and a couple others, and <clears throat> they were kind of close to the family. Some things about mom as uh, her race ended. Kimberly found something in her home book, and I may have shared this with y'all. Uh, while mom was in her final hours of battle, and Kimberly was staying there at the house, and mom had a little piano there. Kimberly took lessons on it, and I'd sit there with her and play chopsticks growing up. But, uh, this piano had made all the moves, and uh, sitting in Huntington in that living room now. Got a little song book on there that <clears throat> has been a staple in our church uh, for years. And Kimberly was thumbing through it one evening and found a couple of notes that Mom had written. One of them was in March of 2009. And, uh, Mom had frontal temporal dementia and uh, aphasia. So she knew something was coming on. And uh, the MRI showed it in 2012, and it was a tough battle over those last seven years. But I guess at that time she knew uh, she wanted to get a message out her family and she had a couple of little scribbled notes in there in her own hand a list of her favorite songs and just so we wouldn't mess them miss miss them or get them wrong she had the page number down beside them that was in the song book but there was a line at the bottom in her own hand that she had written and now it means so much and defines her to a T it simply said at the bottom, when all is done, I love you all. Powerful words in mom's hand. What a treasure to find. Well, <clears throat> my good friend Don Foreman took it upon herself to send a little gift that she didn't have to do. I'm hoping I don't spoil this for dad because I really want to get his reaction tomorrow and give him his. We've got three of them. Came in the mail today. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm pretty confident that, you know, when you see something written in your mom's hand or your dad's hand, somebody that you love dearly, it's automatically recognizable. You know who wrote it. And uh, I opened the little package up today, and she had it inscribed, three little keychains. What a gift. Let me show you all this real quick. If I can figure this camera out. Well... Let's do it this way, because it's going to be backwards. <clears throat> Y'all bear with me a second. If I can figure out this camera. Well, <laughs> there goes that, I guess. It was a good idea when I had it. Anyway, that in her own hand is, is transcribed from the bottom of that note that we found on top of that piano. When all is done, love you all. I guess that's pretty much what it all amounts to, don't it, folks? Love's pretty much the answer. We just got to figure out how to apply it right in its own time. Of course, love's not a lay down. It, it knows rules and sternness, but uh, grace is a big part of that. So thank you, Don, very much for that. It's going to mean a lot. Um, boy, just uh, my eyes went to sweating when I... <laughs> Opened that up and saw Mom's handwriting there, etched in that nice keychain, that metal. Good stuff. Well, let's go in here and check these chickens, see if we got one hatching real quick. And then uh, I missed roll call the other night, so we'll have to do one, even if we run a little long. Uh, I need these things to get on hatched and get up to laying. <laughs> we we struggling out there. Them uh, 20 or so I got left are doing their best to keep up with the 10 a day. <laughs> it's going to be a little dark. I don't know if we're going to have any luck in here or not. I know she was trying to bust out a while ago. I think I got a chicken factory going on in here. So <laughs> they go from the incubator to the... Yeah, she... It's going to be a few more hours, but y'all can see there. We got... These will be, be ready in about another... Oh... They're 10 days. We've got about 11 days on those. But all these will be hatching. Well, there's one popping out there. Starting to pit. 
I don't know if we can hear this one or not. That one will be out by morning. But anyway, I'm not going to let the predator get these. We'll have to close these up. <laughs> let me see if I can get one of these little ones. That, uh, we have about five, four or five in here that aren't quite ready for the, the condominium out there. You're all right. So they're coming on. <laughs> That's why I call it a chicken factory. They go from the eggs to the crate and then out to the to the condominium. <laughs> Let me get posted up out here in my Texas chair and uh, do a quick roll call. Hope y'all had a good day. All right, let me see if I can figure this out. Well, it keeps going off the... Ooh, a lot of them to catch up on here. All right, uh, let's see. There's Carrie. How are you? Good to see you this evening. Miss Alicia up North Carolina way, with a little sunshine there. Hey, what's going on, Ray? You first to give? <laughs> you good about being first. Uh, you probably don't remember this, and I always think, uh, now that you're checking in all the time, I immediately go to you. I got an old bow saw that we had in forestry. Actually, it's just the bow part of it. Uh, one of us knuckleheads bent it off in a tree and uh, was going to throw it away. For some reason, I threw it in the back of my pickup in 1988 and that thing has made every I, it's not usable don't know why i keep hanging on to it but it always hangs in a nail in whatever garage i'm in and it made it to the old home place here but i guess that's a pretty good old souvenir from the forester days at huntsville high <laughs> anyway that that was free ray was in that class with me so pretty good memories there there's uh pamela mcferrin standard yeah lots of shelling that's right that is right. I think we put up uh, out of that five gallon bucket and a little extra we had a uh, good six quarts today. So they're in the freezer and ready to ready to throw a ham hock in and uh, get them cooked. <laughs> I do mine in chicken stock instead of water. Um, I think it gives a little bit better flavor. Don't reckon I got any shortage of chicken stock, do I? <laughs> There's Jamie Johnson. How are you? And uh, my Aunt Pat. Well, I guess we can get some dry ice and ship them up that way, Aunt Pat. <laughs> There's Patricia. Uh, I did get those peas froze. Sure did, Patricia. Uh, Donna, if you're still watching, y'all need to come on and get some of this corn and some of these peas. Uh, there ain't enough to sell. It's, it's mainly for the family, so family good friends. So if any of y'all in the area want some, reach out to the page. And we'll figure out how to, how to get you a few. There's Mike up in California. And Roxanne, thank you. Kimberly's checking in. And there's Kathy. Evening blessings to you, man. Thanks, Luke, from Australia. Appreciate that. There's Shelly Lee Gary. Uh, I've got a, well, yeah, i got to get a better guard dog. Old Hudson will bark, but he likes chicken, too, so if I leave him off the off the chain. Now, he's responsible for about 15 of those that I've lost over the last eight, nine months. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I guess, guess I do. There's a, for now, we'll just leave them in the coop. It's well long enough. It'll hold probably 600 chickens in there comfortably, so 30 or 40 be just fine. <laughs> There's Felicia from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, twice, I guess. And Mr. Roy. Uh, well, um, Roy wants me to bring you up today on all we're trying on the tomatoes. They did well, but I had, uh, had cutworms um, get a hold of them. So a couple of things happened. I didn't have enough cages to cage up 200 plants, obviously. I uh, only had about 15 or 20 cages, so I had to use stakes. And as those tomatoes grow, you've got to retie them to keep them, especially these beef steaks, because they're such a, a big tomato when they get loaded down the, the weight shifts. Well, I wasn't on the place um, <clears throat> except at night and uh, didn't have time to, or wasn't able to, to reallocate that. So that's pretty much why I've lost most of them. Uh, that and the cutworms and and just not able to weed them. So uh, Everything was done right, but you gotta you gotta stay on top of them. So wasn't able to do that on this first round But I've got another oh probably 30 or 40 that's growing that uh, maybe I can stay on top of and get a good production out of these are still loaded and uh, I'll have a few along but uh, We'll uh, they're just not going to put out as much as possible a lot of them have fell, fallen over 
and uh, with the weight <clears throat> you'll break the stalk trying to pick it up on the stake like it needs to be so just need a little care along the way and if you neglect it then that's what happens let me show you here so you can see how that one's pulled on that I wasn't able to get it up in time so it's just kind of had to stay there if you try to move it it'll it'll break but it's putting on a few just the same but it's all right <clears throat> uh, Family's more important than tomatoes any day of the week, so not worried about it at all. That cost me a whole dollar <laughs> to buy them all them seeds, so uh, they will be just fine on that. But the cornmeal I think will cut those. Uh, I hadn't seen any more new cut worm problems, so uh, cornmeal and a little di dimethyl earth kind of help that around the base. But uh, anyway, that, that's what we're doing on those, Roy. Curtis from Salado, how are you? Yeah. I know I've got some uh, icicle pickles, uh, a, grand, a recipe my grandmother used to make there. The brine is done, goodness, 12 cups of sugar and 16 cups of water. Talk about syrup, goodness. Had to put some green food coloring in it per the recipe, but I think I'm going to skip that next time. Ain't no sense in that artificial green in there. And had to use the whole little plastic deal, a tablespoon and a half of green food coloring. Ain't no sense in that. They're already green enough. So I'm going to skip that if I make them again. But they look good. I got a can on tonight. So that'll happen after dark. <laughs> There's Andrew. How are you? Interlaken, I think. I need to learn how to pronounce that. There's Judy in Grand Saline, Texas. Having to have some pullets or laying hens. Uh, I'll, I'll have to do that, Judy. I'll probably have a few here pretty quick. So, um... There's Judy Hicks. Man, I'm running a little long tonight, y'all. I'm sorry. There's Allison and Margie. Hey, how are you, man? Good friend of Kimberly's. And there's Melissa, Teresa, Kimberly. Let me see here. Yeah, that's good stuff, isn't it, Bruce? There's uh, Janet. Well, thank you. It's a blessing to have y'all all along here. Carrie, good to see you. Oh, Kathy, we've got a ton of those. Um, those, those are a treasure as well. Uh, ain't nothing like cooking even the most basic of recipes if you're reading your mom's handwriting, especially after she's gone, isn't it? <laughs> Kimberly's got all those. I'm going to have to talk her out of them. That's going to be like prying cookie away from a baby, I guess. But maybe she'll let me at least take pictures of them, huh? I reckon she will. <laughs> There's Jean. How are you? And Emily's up in Tennessee. Deborah's checking in. There's Janice Smith from Texas. Hey, there's my good friend Terry. How are you? They had a uh, round of storms last night, like took her out. I know a lot of y'all up in the Dallas area had a, a lot of problems, so she's picking up from that this evening. Uh, that's good stuff. Birthday cards from her mama. That's good. There's Pam Milam Duke Stroud. There's the name from Irving, Texas. And there's Mr. Matt down from Waco Way. <laughs> and. Turned into Oliver Wendell Douglas. <laughs> okay. There's Joanne. Good to see you too. And uh, there's my, my son Lance up in Illinois. How are you, buddy? And there's uh, Tanya back in Texas. Uh, I think I got everybody caught up. All right. <clears throat> That's going to do it for tonight. I guess I could have had a, a 30 minute sitcom as long as I ran. <laughs> anyway, just had a little rambling to do. But. Uh, Place is mowed. Dad's coming up, I believe, Wednesday, him and Wally. Um, they want to pick some corn and peas. So I'm having to leave a few out there. I need to pick a bunch today, but it'll, it'll hold another day or two. And, uh, they'll, they'll come up and get their fill of picking a little. <laughs> Y'all have a good evening. Be the light. and I guess try to learn things a little faster than maybe I did sometimes. Might go a little smoother. Y'all have a good evening. Have a good week. Be the light.